Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Warmer Sports Podcast. I'm Rob Serafi, and as always, joined by Theodore and David. We're going to go with a bit more of a smoother <laughs> and softer intro than the last time. But once again, I just want to tell you guys that although when I was playing down last time, I saw one editing uh, through Dagan's amazing editing work that I pointed down the subscribe button was actually over there. So below Theodore, I think. Potentially is where you guys can see it's a red button, white, white letters that says subscribe. You guys, won't, you guys are so smart. You guys can figure it out. One hundred percent. You guys are geniuses. If you're following us. That means you're clearly doing something right in life. So make sure it hits that subscribe button. I want to open with something today. So we've been talking a little bit about history in the Bench Warmer Sports channel group me, and I've been binge watching history stuff because I've been bored, and I always love watching history and dictatorships, all that. It just fascinates me. Another thing I've been binge watching that I wanted to open up the floor to is the thought about the oceans. Now I am huge into marine biology, and I know you get what I know you guys are thinking. Rafi and marine biology sounds crazy. You guys don't know me, so I mean I guess it's okay. But I wanted to get your thoughts on the ocean. Do you guys because there's a lot of people who are scared of the ocean because of the unknown, and there's a lot of people who are very interested, like I am, in the ocean. So I want to get your thoughts before we get into the sports talk. Is the ocean scary to you guys, or do you think it's very interesting? Uh, now, first of all, I was kind of hoping you would ask us about dictators. However, <laughs> with that being said, I love the ocean. How can you not? I mean, there's so much out there. And, yeah, I, mean, I was in um, Fire Island a week back, and, you know, there are shark attacks everywhere. Like, people are getting bit left and right. I don't care. I just want to go in and have fun in the waves. Like, you know, it's so cool that there could be stuff out there. Yeah, it could kill me. You know, if that happens, I guess it's just meant to be. I couldn't agree more with Theodore. I mean, t- like yesterday I was, uh, or like on Sunday the 24th, I was swimming in the Hudson River. So, I mean, that is part ocean because like the river, the like the ocean flows in and then it flows out. So whatever the point is that I think a fish swam under me. Some of my friends say it might have been a body. I like to hope that was just a fish. Um, well, I was disappointed I didn't see any report. dolphins though. I was, I see, I had a dream that I'd be able to, I'd be swimming and there'd be a dolphin, but there was no dolphins. So that very much disappointed me. But again, as Theodore said, I have no fear in the ocean. I'd rather, I'd rather die in the ocean than anywhere else. See, a lot yeah, of people right. are scared about that because like you may not ever get, like your body may never be found again. And it's like the depths of the ocean are so deep too, where it's like, there's so, but then again, it's like. Think about, like, all the stuff that we don't... We didn't even know that there was such thing as, like, a 15-meter-long giant squid in our ocean until, like, a couple years ago. Like, 10 years ago, we were able to confirm that. So it's just, like, you know, you don't know what's there, and that's that's what fascinates me. But I wanted to just start the discussion there because I just feel like that's a fun kind of, like, brain warm-up kind of thing to do. But another thing I wanted to mention before we get truly into sports, and this is kind of sports, is one of our members of our podcast participating in a triathlon and honestly i'm kind of shocked i did cross country i did track when i was in high school i never ran a triathlon so i was very impressed to hear when davian mentioned that he did a triathlon i want to hear your thoughts on it was your first was it your first time what are what are you taking away from it what are you going to do or if you're going to do it again what would you like to change going forward uh my first time ever doing it it was new york city uh so got to conquer the concrete jungle really so that was really nice um the I would say, uh, I mean, swimming in the Hudson River, it's, it's for some reason, it's always been on my bucket list because, you know, as a young kid, I was always crossing over from New Jersey to New York City. I always see the Hudson River be like, I want to swim in there one day. Uh, I saw this opportunity arise at the New York City Triathlon, and I took it. I mean, I'm not a triathloner. Look, I can swim. I can bike. Cannot run. Cannot run. I'm telling you, yeah. that run part it was two and a half miles. I had to go, like, I, I saw a hill. There was, like, some guy next to me. I'm like, yeah, I'm walking this. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So we just walked <laughs> our way up. Then I started jogging a bit. But it was good. But the problem is the heat. It, like, New York City was hit by such a heat wave this past weekend. And it, it, then there was, like, an hour delay in the start. And so – because they shortened the course overall. So that should have made it much easier, which it did. But then they the, – because of the delay, that difference of the heat wasn't really there. So that was really uh that, that was annoying for the most part, but uh, other than that, it was really fun. Uh, and uh, I'd definitely be doing it again next year. Uh, and uh, I invite Theodore to do it with me next year. Yeah, Challenge absolutely. I, <laughs> I'm you're gonna force me, okay? Are we threatening? Are we doing death threats again? I thought that was um, reserved for last week. 
No, no. I'm, I'm down for a triathlon any time, though, Davey. All right, Theodore, I'll, I'll make a bet. I'll make a bet with you. If the Giants have a record yeah. of, okay, let's go five and twelve. Will you do the triathlon with me? The Giants are gonna do so much better than five and twelve. We're going okay, okay, yeah, yeah, but, okay, fine, fine. So about. do that. Do you agree to that bet? Yeah, I'm down for this triathlon. I'm so ready. All right, all right. You heard yeah, the you Giants know. don't go on the, the Giants the go five five and twelve. Theodore's we'll doing the right. triathlon. All right, or I'll just do it regardless. I I think Theodore's just like heck, the Giants can go zero and seventeen and still do the triathlon. So I don't. <laughs> you gotta fly over to New York. You'll run the triathlon with us. We'll yeah, see. It, it depends what I'm up. What it depends on what we're doing. Robbie, if the Falcons go 0 17, you're doing you're, you're going you're doing the triathlon. With us. I might as well just get a ticket. <laughs> 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 oh boy! All right. Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into the Falcons. Do a little Falcons talking, just football talking a little bit. But I do want to mention because I'm on hockey stuff and I'm legally obligated by the NHL to mention this. So Matthew Kachuk. If you want to see the Flames reaction video that's doing so far pretty well on the YouTube channel, I urge you to check it out. You can hear all the different times I say Kutchuk, Tuchuk. I say that name a billion different times. It's quite fascinating on my Midwest accent. I can just say that that seven-letter word, I think. Yeah, seven-letter word, so many different ways. So it's quite fascinating. Definitely keep tracking. Let me know and comment how many different ways I pronounce Kutchuk, Tuchuk, Tuchuk, whatever it is what it is. But he was recently traded to the Florida Panthers for Jonathan Huberdeau, Mackenzie Weaver, Cole Schwint, Schwint, public enemy number one, if you know, you know, and a 2025 conditional first-round pick, which is lottery-protected. You guys kind of were talking a little bit about him because you're me. You guys, I'm, we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. But I just want to give my two cents. I think this is a great trade for the Flames. They were really pinned into a corner with Matthew Kachuk wanting out. And I think they got a great haul for him. I really like this package. And, yeah, that's kind of it. That's all I really have on that forefront. We'll see what happens if they bring back Huberto, if they bring in Uyghur and resign them both. I'm sure if they don't find an extension, they'll be training them off soon. And you'll just be getting an even bigger package as well. But, yeah, overall, just to summarize, I like this move for the Flames. The Panthers, I think this is a good move for them. This Kachuk is just one of those guys that they kind of lack. They're kind of missing that toughness in the – Second round versus Tampa, so I think this is a good move for both sides. Obviously, we'll see how it plays out. And as I mentioned prior, the Flames' overall grade of that trade is going to be contingent on if they bring back Huberto and Mackenzie Weir and give them extensions. But let's move on into something that we can all discuss. And Theodore, I just want to get your thoughts on the James Harden extension. Obviously, it was announced, I believe, a few weeks ago, earlier this month, that he was not going to pick up his player option, I believe, which was $47 million. Correct me if I'm wrong once you start to speak. Yes. And he has just agreed a couple of days ago to a $68.6 million contract extension. We couldn't have given him another 400000 Come on. Not nice. And $33 million of those of that money is guaranteed. Theodore, your thoughts on the contract? I think it is so telling of where the NBA as a league is at that I look at, oh, James Harden, two years, $68 million. And it doesn't blow my mind. Like, we're in a league where $34 million for a superstar is a bargain. Like, this just pales in comparison to Bradley Beal getting five years, $250 million. Like, I remember six years ago, 2016, Timothy Mozgov, who was basically a scrub at the time, but he got a four-year, $64 million contract, and everyone was losing their minds. Like, I think this absolutely represents what has happened in the NBA with contracts where people are saying, oh, look, he took a pay cut. He's only making $34 million. It's just absolutely absurd to me. I feel like, and we'll get into this in, in a couple minutes, but it's kind of similar to the NFL in the sense that you always get this player that's every quarterback, it feels like they're overpaid or underpaid. But then you like look at the quarterbacks in the past, and you're like, "Oh, this guy was under is underpaid now." But it's like, at the time, like they were potentially overpaid. Mm-hmm. And it just shows for the NBA and NFL especially, and it's clear that as time has gone on, the amount of money and thus the salaries of the players has gone up an ex- exponential rate. Where guys, like you said, Mozgov getting like sixty million dollars per year, it's crazy then, 
But like you look at it now, and it's like, okay, you're playing paying sixty million dollars for a bench piece. Okay, that might be a little much, but like I mean, there's it's not like oh my goodness, how like what are you doing shoveling all this money? I just want to mention once again, hockey. If you were giving out a sixteen million, the highest player in the league is Connor McDavid. He, his salary cap hit is twelve point five. So, but yeah, no, you're completely right with how we're at a point with the NBA and also with the NFL where contracts are always. I I just feel like it's kind of met at this point because you always know that in a year or two, the next guy up is just going to make even more than that. So it's just going to keep building and building upon that. So Rafi, I, and you can throw the MLB right in here too. I, if you remember, for years the debate was, okay, who's going to be the first four hundred million dollar guy in baseball? Or three hundred million? I'm sorry, three hundred million. That was the debate. Who's going to get the first three hundred million dollars? Juan Soto turned down a four hundred million dollar contract. Earlier, yeah. And yeah. everyone's like, "Yeah, that was the right move. He can get more money." Like it's absurd oh. where these contracts are going. And I'm very interested to see because I think there will be some kind of bubble burst. Like I think it's got to stop somewhere especially as these leagues continue to have viewership go down more and more every year. Like right. one year, I feel like we'll just see the money stop flowing in. I want to mention this because in a, we're going to hold off on this for one second. Cause I want to talk about another salary thing, another salary cap situation, but you're right. We're going to leave this into the NFL because Kyler Murray got extended. And I want to talk about how the, we were, there's this bubble of like how much guaranteed money is a player going to get. And Everyone thought with Deshaun Watson getting, I believe, two hundred thirty dollars million dollars or two twenty nine million dollars guaranteed, that all of a sudden, all these NFL quarterbacks are going to say, "I want fully guaranteed contract." And obviously, that didn't happen with Kyler Murray. But I'm going to push that aside real quick, and I do want to touch on Aaron Judge because there's been a lot of talk. First off, I don't know if you guys saw the clip. I'm pretty sure I sent it to you guys, but to whoever the reporter was who said to Aaron Judge. There's a little kid that says that he hopes that you're going to be a Yankee. And what do you have to say to that kid about your future? Like, that's such a stupid thing to say. I hate the Yankees. <laughs> and anyone saying that kind of thing to kind of just make Aaron judge, that like, you're just trying to make him look like a villain. Like, we you put him... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ron, but like I, I did infuriate me when you sent me that video. Look, the, the reporter put Aaron Judge on the spot in a place where... It, look, if this is a press conference... Fine. This is just a on the field press opening. conference, and I'm happy. I'm walking out. Yeah, I'll be walking out straight up, or I'd say move on. Next question. But you, I, I, to have on the field access to any player and to ask a question like that, it's so stupid. I feel like you just. I don't know if the word is gaslighting, but it's just to put Aaron Judge on the spot is just so wrong. Look, his the, the we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Do I want Aaron Judge to resign? Yes. Do I think he will resign? Yes. But there's so much more to a contract than really that is shown by any of these teams. You know, especially, like, you know, we're going to go into this, but the Kyle Murray, there's there's so many clauses in these players' contracts that we don't know of, except for the team and the player, because nobody's really going through the contract and reading every single little detail that the player uh, agreed to or the team agreed to. Right. Theodore? Yeah, I think um, Judge is an interesting case because the more this season drags on, the more I feel like he, this is last year with the team. Like, I just feel like you'll you'll get a team that offers him a crazy offer. Like, I think um, Texas, the Rangers are definitely an option. And the obvious counter to that is, oh, but he'll want to be in New York. And I just think that the Mets even will swoop in. Cohen is a madman. Like, I am just prepared for the Mets to be throwing out crazy money for years after year after year. Like, I'm, I'm really worried about Judge being gone. I like to think that, you know, the name recognition, the reputation he has as a Yankee, the idea of being a captain next year will get him to come back. But especially as Juan Soto trade talks heat up, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I got a gut feeling that this is it for him, sadly. I apologize for laughing a little bit, but I was looking at Aaron Judge and just seeing if there's any new news. And fan sided, which you guys will all learn, I hate fan sided so much. I love fan sided. That's a debate for another day. But. It's the stupid. It's anyone could write for them. This is this is a. I value my team and I value the people I put together. You guys are doing a great job. This fan sided is like, do you have any expertise? No. Sweet. 
you're hired. I just saw an article just now posted two days ago. The perfect Yankee scenario with Juan Soto and Aaron Judge does exist. And I'm you're going to have to give up a billion dollars if you want that to happen. And I just want to ask you guys, do you guys have any idea what Aaron Judge's contract might look like? Because honestly, it's going to be massive. I don't even – it's going to be huge. He's, he's coming off uh, – Yeah. once he – his contract, I believe, expires this offseason. And he's arguably – he might win the MVP. He's a definitely he a race for AL MVP. He absolutely needs to. He is the clear favorite. Also, Rafi, off topic, but I may have just made an application to become a writer for thunderous intentions of fan sided. So we may have a problem coming up. Regardless, must, though. Davian, we might need that secret service. Okay, okay. <laughs> really, Davian, I think this is some kind of fraud. I think it'll get you um, kicked out. Yeah, I don't know, Rafi. I don't know. Well, Although it kind of makes you blend in with everyone else. Really. We'll talk about this off camera, Rafa. We'll talk about this. Yeah. Off. So we'll we'll yeah. discuss this later. But yeah. I do want to move on now to what we've kind of been talking about a little bit, and that's the Kyler Murray contract. So it was announced, I believe, a few days ago. I don't have the uh, Thursday. Thursday. It was a two hundred thirty point five million dollar contract, one hundred five million dollars dollars guaranteed at the signing, and one hundred sixty million guaranteed. Once again. As we were touching uh, touching upon earlier, Deshaun Watson gets I I want to say it was two thirty two thirty one. If I'm yeah, wrong, yeah, full contract guaranteed or something. Like full that. contract guaranteed except for one million dollars. Ooh, a million dollars. I know if I got a million dollars, I'd be pretty happy. But a million dollars to an NFL quarterback like Deshaun Watson in the grand scheme of things means nothing. Maybe you can settle another lawsuit, but that's a whole nother <laughs> a whole nother thing. And there's a lot of discussion when that first contract got signed, where the Browns were like. Every NFL owners are like, what are you doing? We're going to have to guarantee, fully guarantee quarterbacks from now on, yada, yada, yada. And Kyler Murray got $70 million less guaranteed than Deshaun Watson. We can get into the whole Deshaun Watson did this. And we're not going to get into that. We did that last episode. Check it out if you want to hear Deshaun Watson takes. Yeah. But I want to hear your thoughts on the Kyler Murray extension. Obviously, it makes sense. It's better than Josh Rosen. So, like, obviously, the Cardinals were going to shovel out the money for him, but. Hold up. You know how much I like Josh Rosen, okay? Don't, don't. diss on my man like that. Okay? Don't diss on my man like that. He's a Cleveland Brown. He's going to be starting for the Cleveland Browns if Thank you for mentioning Sean that. Watson is suspended. Yes, yes. So basically it will be. Because exactly, Josh, exactly. Um, another thing I want to say that, look, Kyler Murray contract, it makes a lot of sense that he wasn't offered the full bank. Cliff Kingsbury gave up on the number nine or ten draft pick in the NFL. I think it was thirteen because he said. 13. Well, yeah, I know that. Like, he, he like something to do with his number. Like, me. yeah, right, right. Something to do with his numbers. Like, how many teams like get, like didn't give him a shot? Whatever. Uh, that Josh yeah, Rosen. You're right. Nine right. mistakes in front of him. Right. He said nine mistakes in front of him. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he gave up on him right away for Kyler Murray. So in Kyler Murray, Murray's mind, he must, or the agents, he must see that, look, I might not be a guaranteed Cardinal. They, they're not going to be offering me the bank. Also, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Kyler Murray agreed in this contract that for every game, he needs to study, like, film for at least four hours. That was a bit of a standout to yes. me. I, I, I thought that was kind of funny that, that my man just agreed for a five-year contract, you know, to do homework. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, uh, that well, was kind of, if I was offered $3 million to willingly do homework, I mean, it would be better than me paying X thousand dollars a year to do yeah. homework. So no, that's true. True that. But Theodore, I want to ask you about that. The fact that there's a study clause in the contract, does that raise any concern for you about Kyler Murray? Yes, work? finally. Right. Okay. It does. It does for me as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to any of our original viewers, we were watching back the, during the playoffs last year. I think you guys remember how I feel about Kyler Murray. He is, in my opinion, the most overrated quarterback in the NFL right now by a long shot. He is not that good. He really isn't. He runs around. He makes some cool throws. He has Hopkins to throw it to. That helps him a lot. He has a fun offense in Kingsbury. Although, you know, they always fall apart in the playoffs and everyone likes to pin it on Kingsbury. But Kyler's play declines in the big moments. He is not that good. And now you're telling me that this guy has to 
be forced to study. Like, that is one of the biggest red flags you can possibly raise. Like, I, isn't the expectation that any NFL quarterback should be studying for more than four hours a day? Like, shouldn't you be following that Peyton Manning mentality of just watching film hour after hour, day after day? Like, come on. Like, how are you going to be out here not watching film consistently? Like, just, I'm telling you, this is going to fail. And now he's taking up so much of the team's cap space, too. Arizona, they might be solved this year, but mark my words, 2023 season, they are going to crash and burn. This is going to be one of the worst signings in recent NFL history. I was low-key kind of shocked yeah. the Cardinals were willing to spend all that money because the Cardinals have been known to not be too big at shoveling out money to anyone. So the fact that they were willing to just be like, here's all this money, Tyler, was a bit interesting to me. Once again, yeah, I, I'm on this. I'll yeah, guys, I'm on the same ship with you guys, though, about the whole Kyler Murray and the hours thing. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. It gives me bad vibes. And you guys know how I feel about people who don't want to put in work and don't have that work ethic and don't, like, are just going to be babies and complain. <laughs> Pierre, Pierre Luc Dubois, who's just like, I'll just take the easy way out. I'll just have to put my, my shifts so I can get traded. I don't like that kind of player, and I'm glad that Kyler Murray isn't playing for the Falcons because the Falcons are going to get C.J. Stroud or from a boy from Alabama. What's his name? Bryce Young. Bryce Young, thank you. Man, give Mariota a shot. Come on. I know. My bad. We'll, we'll get it all sorted out. But regardless, it's a, it's a concern, and I think yeah, we don't need to keep talking about it. It's a concerning factor, and... We'll see what happens with Lamar Jackson. We'll see what happens with Herbert. We'll see what happens in the future with Joe Burrow, especially if the Bengals go off this upcoming season again. We'll get into some more season previews once we get closer to the NFL season. Yeah. But I, the Herbert I and Burrow contacts are going to be absurd. Like, they are going to be mind-breaking. Yeah. And we the question is, Mahomes on this huge. Yeah, the question is, like, will what? any of these players really, like, uh, actually be like kind of like go the Tom Brady route and be like, you know, we're not going to take the full bank and we're yeah. going to use some money for like, you know, building up our team. Out of all those players, I see Joe Burrow doing that. Really, I think most. that's exactly what I think. I, I honestly think that for the first contract, my personal belief and what I would like feel like is proper get your money, chase your bag, get all the money you can in your first contract. That takes you as like a quarterback to sign that. I'd say they're around like 27 when they take that contract around. That takes you five years till you're like 32, 33, around that range. Then you can start to take less money. And then because you've already set yourself up so yeah. well financially. And now you have like, okay, you have the generational wealth. You have the n- enough money for generations. Now you can still make 25, 30 million dollars a year. Right. But rather than taking up like half the cap, eh, third of the cap, this, that. You give the team more flexibility once you get older. That's mm-hmm. what you see a lot in the NHL. I'm sure the M- I'm not sure if the NBA does it a lot, but I know you the don't NHL see it. In the well, you, you just saw James Harden kind of do it. Where but players, when they're old, when they get older, they'll sign for less, so the team can put more players around them. I'm sure other. I'm sure there's players, at least in all leagues, who are player signs with that. Obviously, Tom Brady, one of the more notable ones in the NFL, but. I mean, Tom Brady, I don't know why he didn't catch him, but I guess because he's just so good and because he's no, such a great it's, system quarterback, it all, it all worked out. No, no, it's because the guy doesn't need the money. His wife's a model, so, yeah. you know, she makes business, she makes more money than here. him, and he doesn't really need have that. You guys seen, yeah, have you guys seen Brady's endorsements, too? He oh, is doing not. everything. I saw him in a Hertz ad. Him, like, Shaq. It's him, Shaq, Barkley. Yeah. Rodgers, Mahomes a little bit. Baker was good. If Baker had a good season last year, we would have a whole conversation about how Baker is in like every single ad. Hockey is always David Poster and Hawk. You'll see all that in a lot of ads as well. So you, you tend to see like the same couple of faces throughout the end of, throughout the world of sports when you're watching advertising. 100%. Serena Williams too. That's she's in everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's in. She's in that one TV. From, I forgot. I think it's Direct TV. I think. But I, I see that yeah, it, yeah. all the yeah. time. 
That's the world of it's still. I still laugh at the fact that Brady does a Subway commercial. Like, that is just yeah. mind-blowing to me. I love the group. Yeah. I, lo- I like how they got Garoppolo in there, too. It's a good dynamic, I feel like. Yeah. They, they yeah. need to have both of them in the same thing. I don't know if they'll, they'll ever do that, but that'd be a great marketing plan as well. I do want to move on until we get to the, I guess, larger portion of the show and mention two quick pieces of unfortunate news. Luckily, no deaths, which is always great. But John Mechie diagnosed with leukemia, drafted by the Houston Texans in the third round. He Luckily, this leukemia is the most treatable form that he's citing. He's undergoing treatment right now. He's optimistic that there might be a chance for him to return at some point in the season. But obviously, we wish him the best in his recovery. And leukemia, cancer sucks. We all know that. Yeah. Man, I hope he comes back and just roars on the field. He's had uh, a little bit of a tough the best. break this past year and including this upcoming year. It's going to be tough, but you know what? It's just going to make him more tougher all around. And we're very excited because he was very – until that injury, he was very dynamic in Alabama. And yeah. I just hope that we're not just talking, oh, if it wasn't for that injury, oh, if it wasn't for this, he'd be such a great player. Because I think he can really be a really solid – wide receiver two and potentially wide receiver one in the future. Good spot. Right. Yeah, for sure. And then other guy, Justin Ross, out for the season. I uh, he's out for the season with an injury. Don't recall what it was. I think it may have been a no, I don't leg. Know. And he's leg. had a lot of issues with that leg. Um, right. And that's just been back. that's been just so tough because he balled out his first year at Clemson and it was just you saw the potential, and that's one of those things, too, where I personally, I always like to look back a few years ago on drafts and see, like, okay, like, let me see the preseason ranking. And let me see, like, how, as time goes on, how the draft board changes. Because, like, Leal, Sam Howell, Spencer Rattler, for example, like, those guys were, like, mm-hmm. early first-round picks. And all of a sudden, Leal get drafted, got drafted in the third, Howell in the fifth, Rattler transfers. But... Justin Ross, I remember seeing playing Madden or like having like doing it in past draft classes or doing using you know, future draft classes. And yeah. People talking about like future draft boards as a whole. And they're like, Justin Ross is the best wide receiver in the 2022 draft. This guy is a top five wide receiver or top five pick. This guy's a bona fide number one wide receiver, this, that. Mm-hmm. And after that first year at Clemson, it just kept injury, injury, injury. And it's been so sad to see because he got picked up by the Chiefs as an undrafted free agent. And I really like that. I thought, okay, like this guy, he's going to get healthy. He's going to be all set to go. And this guy could be a really big playmaker for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if, like, if you guys have any thoughts on Mechie or Ross, but it's, Ross. Just, it's an unfortunate yeah. case of just how sports happen. So there's going to be players like this, and it's just terrible. Yeah. Mechie, my thing with Mechie, at the very least, he was a second-round pick. He is set to live a very comfortable life, even if by any um, chance he's not able to get onto a field. Justin Ross, because he, he was one of the biggest prospects of all, recruits of all time. Like, this is a guy who, from the age of 16 years old, was basically told by everyone around him, you're going to be making tens of million dollars in a couple of years. Like, to go from that to having nothing is just really sad. And in my opinion, I said this pre-show, the biggest um, indicator that, uh, that, uh, that we'll ever see of why NIL is so important. Like, to like think how much money he would have made for his family had he been given the chance at Clemson. Like, it's just sad that he has to go through this, wishing him the best in his recovery. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing to say um, except for, you know, wishing them both the best in their recovery. Um, kind of changing topics, another thing that came out today that I want to mention as a Patriots fan, uh, Danny Mandola decided to retire. Uh, man's carried really the Patriots in the, in the playoffs many times, cl- came up clutch. Uh, I know this is a really big change of topic because we would go from, you know, uh, saying our well wishes for two players to you know kind of celebrating a man's career, but didn't want to mention uh, Danny Mendoa uh, was also a former line and former Texan, which is why uh, you know former Texan we were talking about Texans. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Danny Mendoa, great guy, uh, great player, and uh, he's now going to broadcasting, so that'd be interesting to see him on TV there. 
100 percent he was always he was never that kind of guy that you draft in like really fantasy football but he was always no. just an underrated guy to just look out for where if welker or for example like welker for example wasn't having like an amazing edelman like yeah amandola always just found a way to just he was there but it wasn't like he's just a guy like he you always yeah. see him like, making a big play whenever you need him so Definitely wish the best for him. I appreciate you mentioning that because I did not have that in the rundown. So yeah. I appreciate you mentioning that. And then I want to move on very briefly for the final part of the podcast today. And I just want to discuss the alternate throwback logos that I got released today. I want to quickly do a bit of a rundown. So some of them, there's some of them are alternate. Some of them are classic. Some of them are color rush. It's clear that some of them are not classics because the commanders, you can't have a classic helmet. You guys can't do that. You guys just released your team name. You can't have a throwback. That's not how it works, unless you want to go back to the name redacted. And I don't feel like getting redacted on YouTube right now. We're only at We're, why are we redacting Washington football team? That was obviously the brightest part of their history. Yeah. The main thing is a W, and then it's a black helmet. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the black back. I don't know why. I'm just not a fan of those. The Eagles, I kind of vibe with. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts about the helmets that stood out to you. We each had... Uh, uh, our, all of our teams released one. Falcons yep. is up with the Patriots. I'll give you your respect, David. One of the greatest. I I love the Falcons one. But I want right. to hear your thoughts on your personal helmets, your team's helmets, and any other helmets that you don't like or you like real quick before we close. Um, so I, I would say, I mean, Patriots first off, like, it's great. I mean, I love the, I love the helmet, uh, the classic uh, I, no, nothing more to say about that one. Uh, one that popped out for me was the Bengals, all white. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. I'm not. I don't know if I'm a big fan of it. I feel like just. I, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of like the, having the all white and black because it doesn't really. I, I feel like Bengals doesn't really feel. I don't really get it because I always. It always there needs to be some type of orange. I always loved. I don't know if you guys remember this, but the color rush jerseys on Thursday yeah. night football. Love those. So those if there's, yeah, if there's something like that, if they like do it on Thursday night football, I kind of get it. But if they're using this in the playoffs or something like that, then that's a no for me. I uh, doubt Jet- that in the playoffs, but continue on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Jets, kind of basic. Falcons, classic. Loved it. Uh, looked good. Commanders, black, all black, like you were saying, Rafi. I don't really know about that. Uh, the others. I'm not it's really funny. sure. They had a W on their helmet, but I don't think they're yeah. going to be getting that. Yeah, they ain't going to be getting any W's. Um, the Giants, that's also classic, of course. Um, looked pretty slick. Um, that's the only time I'll be complimenting the Giants this season, I guess. Um, and that's all. That, that that I think that's really most of the helmets. The Giants Jones. absolutely nailed it. I mean, going back to the old 80s helmets, it's just incredible. Um, I have an order coming in on my Daniel Jones classic throwback jersey. We're wearing them twice this season. I'm excited. It is um, absolutely beautiful, and hopefully we get back to our winning ways of the time. Also, um, this is the Fun. only time I'll be saying this. I'm, I'm going to pretend that no statement was made there. Only time I'm going to be saying this, but the Dallas Cowboys have an incredible helmet. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks way too clean. Um, man, I don't want to have to say this, but yeah, they, they did a great job. Falcons, Patriots, obviously. Davey, you're crazy. The Bengals white helmet looks so slick. I, I don't know. Um, I have mixed feelings. It, it's either it, my mixed feelings are it looks amazing or it's trash. That's kind of my that's people have been like floating this like as a concept thing, like on Instagram and other places for years. I feel like at this point. That's true. I think it was like a popular demand thing where the team decided to just give in. I think it looks slick. I think it'll look great out on the field. And uh, Burrow will look – Evan McPherson will look insane rocking that helmet. Hopefully they do this in a nighttime game because I think what we'd all love to see under the bright lights of either Thursday, Monday, or Sunday night football, seeing those – that whole outfit would just be remarkable to see. So I'd be very entertained to see something like that. I have no clue when the Bengals play in prime time. I'm sure they got a few good, good games this upcoming season because of their amazing year last year. So we'll see what happens. And, yeah, the Cowboys, I do vibe with the Cowboys as well. But that's going to be a wrap for this one. We talked a ton, ton of NFL stuff, ton about baseball, ton about everything. We talked about the ocean, too, at the start. We hope you enjoyed some yep. ocean talk, some triathlon talk as well. Maybe in the future we'll talk Chicago Marathon, all that stuff in the future. But that was 
that was definitely a pleasure to go to. The two times I did go, I did not run. I know you guys were like, oh, did no. No, I didn't. Maybe one day. But we'll see what happens. But for Davey and for Theodore, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you are just browsing your way through and just found this video. Hello. First off, congratulations on making it. I don't know anyone who's made it this far. So once again, congratulations. Make sure to hit the subscribe, subscribe button. And also be sure to follow us on TikTok, Bench Around the Score Sports. We're taking a few days off. We'll be back posting some more shorter sports content. So if you don't like these longer type videos, the TikTok is great. Got my little skits. The TikToks are great as well. You get to hear Theodore and Davian lose their mind. Davian's video hasn't blown up just yet, but hopefully it, it will. It has. It should. Sure. As you're it watching this, sure. hopefully it's blown up by then. So we'll see what happens. Just remember that to save that video, so when Davian's campaigning in 2048 around that time period, you can all right, all right, all right. up on Twitter. Yeah. And be it's not, don't it's do that, Twitter. but make sure to give it a good like, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, for theater, for Davian, we hope you enjoyed. I'm Rock Serafian, and that's all for this one. Peace.